one and four, and I think there were more threes and there were five. So we'll do those three. One and four can be done in Desmos. Uh, you could do this a couple different ways. One, you could just put it in with the numbers in there. So the square root of four over two squared plus ten. That would be three, so B. Or you could put them in with capital X, capital Y, and Z. And then add in all of those sliders and change each value. So x would be 4, y is 10, and z is 2. And either way you can get, you get 3. So make sure you put, use Desmos calculator for that one, and b. For number three, the slope that has an undefined, sorry, the graph, the, the line that has an undefined slope, there we go, would be B. Because A has a zero slope, C has a negative slope, and B has a positive slope. And then for number four, define our line as best fit. I could add in a table, add in all of my order, uh, numbers. Type in my Y1, tilde, MX1. Plus B. And then round to three decimal places. Y equals 1.623. X plus 14.815. the last section of unit 11, so that next week we're starting to follow. With radical operations. Your radical operations work a lot like your polynomial operations. You're basically combining like terms, but only with the coefficients, the numbers outside of the radicals. Um, the numbers inside the radicals the radicand, if they're the same, you're just adding the coefficients and that stays the same. Um, you can only combine radicals with the same index and radicand. So in this example, we could, we can't simplify them as is, but we could simplify the square root of 20. I'm just going to use perfect squares. What's the highest perfect square that goes into 20? Four and four and five. I don't know why I wrote three. The square root of four is two. two. And you just keep bringing down the other part. And if I simplify this, we have negative four times the square root of five minus two times the square root of five. These now have the same index, they're both square roots, and they both have the same radicand, the 5. So you would just combine negative 4 and negative 2. 
to get negative 6 root 5. So you could say negative 6 root 5 or negative 6 times the square root of 5. Once more of a mouthful. Would you get that set third of a positive two? The square root of four. All of these can be checked in Desmos or the calculator to um, find the same decimals. I'll do that for this one and then maybe for some later. What was that second one? And then our final answer was negative six. And you see you get the same decimal. So you know you did that right. Other questions on the example before we move on. So for example one, how would we simplify that? So you write it as 1 root 6 or just root 6. The square root of 6 could not be simplified, so that would just be your answer. What about number 2? 4 times the square root of 5, and that would be it. 5 can't be um, simplified more. Which other ones did we want to do? See, go over and have questions about. Three. Five and six. Okay. So starting with three, the square root of seven can't be simplified, but the square root of sixty-three can. So I'm going to bring down ten root seven plus. Two. What's the highest perfect square that goes into 63? Nine and seven. And we know the square root of nine is three. So we could multiply two and three to get six. And then add those two to get it. Do you have any questions on that desktop? Where did the negative 30 be? It's not negative. Other questions there? Okay. For number five, same thing. We're going to do this simultaneously. What is the highest perfect square we can divide 32 by and 18 by? 85. Negative number 5. What did you say? 84. That works, but it's not the highest. 16 and 2. 16 and 2 for 32. What about 18? 9 and 2. 9 and 2. So then we have 2 times 4 times the square root of 2 minus 3 times 3 times the square root of 2. To multiply both. And subtract. What would our final answer be? Negative square root of 2, or you put okay. negative 1 square root of 3 door. Any questions on that? Okay, let's see. Yes. Let's start doing the same thing for number 6. Find the highest perfect square that goes into 28 and 112. So 
28. What's the highest perfect square that goes into 28? 7 and 4. What about 112? Start dividing it by each of your perfect squares. 4, 9, 16, 25. Keep going. So we have negative 4 times 2 times the square root of 7 plus 4 times 4 times the square root of 7. Multiply to get negative 8 root of 7 plus 16 root of 7. And then add those two. What would our final answer be? That part would be 8 root 7, or 8 times the square root of 7. Why did you multiply your 4 by 2? So whatever, these are already multiplying because they're next to each other. Whatever the square root is, when you bring that down, you're still multiplying. Oh, because the square root of 4 is 2. Alright, and then number 8. What is the highest perfect square that goes into 45? 9 and 5. And then find the highest perfect square that goes into 245. We have 4 times 3 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times 7 times the square root of 7, just 7 times the square root of 5. 12 root 5 plus 21 root 5. As long as you aren't adding the radicands together, you should be fine here and simplifying the radicals. Right. You have yes. Yes. Do we have any other questions so far? We're gonna take it up a notch. Go to the next page. Now we have some with three and some with four doing the same thing. Which of those do we want to see? Do we go over and have questions about? Thirteen. Thirteen. Did you say two different ones, Grace? Any others? and 18, the last one's already most simplified. So what's the highest perfect square that goes into 50? 25 and 25. Okay. What about 18? 19. And then we just keep bringing down negative 3 root 3. And then take the square root of 25 and 9. So we have negative 3 times 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2 minus Multiplying, we have negative 15 root 2, and then just bring everything else down. Here, not all the radicands are the same, so you can only combine the similar radicands, the first two. What would that final answer be? Negative 12, 15, negative 3, root 3. And you would leave that just like that. Negative 12 root 2 minus 3 root 3. 
um, because the three on outdoors is already negative. And you multiply. Other questions? Or? Let's do 13. This one we can see how easy this is. It's really easy to lose numbers here, so make sure you're keeping track of all of your numbers. So, highest perfect square for 8? 4 and 2. 4 and 2. For 45? 5 and 9. And then for 200. Why didn't we combine these two? Mm -hmm. Because these aren't the same. If those aren't the same, we can't combine them. 25 and what? 8 and 8. Those would work, but those are both. Um, 8 can be simplified more. So think of something higher. 15. What? 15. 50 and 8. That would work. So not just factors of, but perfect square. Think of a perfect square that goes into 200. And something higher. 50 and 50. 102. 102 would work. 50 and 2, or 50 and 4 works, but that's not the highest. But 102 is the highest. And all of those could have worked. But since we already have so many numbers, you don't want to have to break down even more and then lose track of things. So you want the highest. You may or may not have time to finish this, so you guys can work this. Divide out of 72. Nine. Um, 
there's something higher. Those both work, but eight could be broken down more. checked 
in the calculator in Desmos to see if the decimals match. Do you have any questions on that one before we start adding variables to the mix? So let's try number five. We're doing the same thing, but now we're also incorporating our exponent rules. When we multiply this, what would that give us? So add your exponents of your variables, <clears throat> then we would break that down like we have been. Um, square root of 36 is 6 and 2 goes into 3 once with how much goes over? So we have 24 n times the square root of n. Have any questions, confusions there before we go on? Why do you put a square root over n? Um, here, when we broke this down, 2 goes into 3 just once, but there's one left over. Or if I were expanding, there's one group of 2, so it would come out, but this one stays inside the radical. Look at 6 through 8. Hold on for 9 and 10. Are there any of those we want to see you go over? 6. Okay. 7. Okay. We won't do 8. So for 6, let's go ahead and multiply those. Outsides together, insides together. What would that be? Negative 15. 3 root 300. I the second one. Then we're going to break that down, find the highest perfect square that goes into 300. Say that again. 400. That goes into 300. Did you say 400? I said 100. 100. No, that would be the best one. And then for the x squared, I didn't separate this, but you could have also done that. 2 goes into 2 just once, so you have just 1x. And the square root of 100 is 10 times 10. So we have negative 150x times the square root of 3 as our final answer. With your multiplying problems, your numbers could get big really fast, so just be careful. Questions on 6 before we do 7? So for 7, go ahead and multiply outsides together, excuse me, insides together, what would that be? 2 to the 7 is good. And then find the highest perfect square that goes into 45. 9 and 5. And 2 goes into 7 how many times? 3 times. So 3 times. So w to the third was how much left over? 1. So the square root of 9 would be 3. I'm going to rearrange this. So that our final answer would be 6 w to the third times the square root of 5 w. You don't need the parentheses, I just wrote them so you don't get confused. Yes? Um, so you just combine the square root of 5 and the square root of 5. Yeah, anything underneath the radical still, you put that all underneath the same radical. Okay. Let's look at 9, where we have <coughs> not just multiplying, but we're adding. Uh, subtracting and multiplying in the same thing. So if you see something like this on the SOL, yes. Why did you switch the face of the W? Yeah. Because this was outside of the radical. So anything outside, I need out front. Um, watch out for order of operations. Multiply first and then add or subtract. So if we multiply first, what would that mean? Uh, 
times the square root of 20. Just keep bringing down that minus 6 root 5. Then we can break down the square root of 20 with the highest perfect square that goes into it. So think about dividing 4 and 4 and 5. 16 would be the closest one to 20, but not that we could divide it by. So that would be 30 times 2 times the square root of 5 minus 6 root 5. What would that final answer be? 54 root 5. I think there was an example like this in test lab one through seven. Um, we went through it, but you can go back and try it again now that you actually have the tools to do so. Do we have questions on 10 before we go to the next page? Or do we want to see 10 before we go to the next page? Yes. Um, what if you like multiply? Can you multiply all three? So I can't multiply this because I'm not, it doesn't say to multiply. Or did you multiply 10 root 2, but you didn't also multiply negative 6? So this one is just subtracting. If it was a like in parentheses right next to it, then I could multiply. And what if it was just positive? Also? If it was just a plus, same thing. That would just be adding. So like here, the things multiplying, I can multiply together, but the things adding, I cannot. Okay. Go on to the next page. So the last piece of multiplying is you might see something where you have to distribute. Same rules apply, but now you're distributing like you normally would distribute. So in the first example, we're still doing outside pieces together, inside pieces together. So when I distribute this, I'm going to multiply the 1 and the 3, but then on the second one, the 6 and the 8. So that would be 3 root 6 plus the square root of 48. And then we could break down the square root of 48. What is the highest perfect square that goes into 48? 16 or 3? I was going to say that works, but I don't think it's the highest, but 16 and 3 work. Can we combine these? No. They're not like radicals, radicans, they all have the same radicans, so that is your final answer. Do you have any questions on that before we do example two? Okay. Example two is just like when we multiplied binomials together. So if you want to use the box method here, you can do that. I'm just going to distribute to show you what piece is being multiplied to what. I'll those first two. 4 times 2 is just 8. 4 times the square root of uh, 4 times negative root 3 would be negative 4 root 3. And then the square root of 3 times 2 would be 2 root 3, so plus 2 root 3. And then the square root of 3 times the negative square root of 3. Negative root 9. Negative root 9. So when you get something like this, you're going to have two things you can combine right away. You should have something that you could take the square root of and then combine those. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. You could have combined these first. That part doesn't matter. So I'm going to combine the 8 and the negative 3, and the negative 4 root 3, and the 2 root 3. What would that be? Negative 2 root 3. For the root, and then what about the other part? Oh, 5. 5 minus 2 root 3, or you can write it as negative 2 root 3 plus 5. You see them more like this first one, so that you don't confuse the number, the constant, and put it underneath the radical. But either or is acceptable. 
Do you have any questions on that one? Look at these other examples, 11 through 18. Which of those do we want to see? Do we over have questions about? Okay. Those are good. That's good enough. Okay, so with 14, we have just one thing being distributed. We're going to take the whole piece and multiply it to both outsides together, insides together. So, what would this first part be? Negative 4 root 12 minus 12 root 28, and we could simplify both of those. Uh, highest perfect square that goes into 12? 23. And then what about 28? 7 and 4. If I simplify both, we get negative 4 times 2 root 3 minus 12 times 2 root 7. So negative 4 root 3 minus 24 root 7. When you have these, the biggest thing is knowing what to multiply and not confusing them and not multiplying it to the wrong piece. Seven bucks. Which one gets the 2 times 2? Oh yeah, that's root 4. So that'd be Other questions on that one? Great. 17. Like example 2, excuse me, we're going to take this entire term, multiply it to that first entire term. What would that be? Root 9. Okay, then that first term times the last. Negative two times five root three. Negative two times five root three. And then negative two times negative four root two plus eight. So I'm going to simplify the square of nine and combine these at the same time. Thirty times three. Minus 34 root 3 plus 8. And then multiply these. And when we combine, our final answer would be... Eight minus thirty-four root three. You have any questions, confusions there? I'm gonna set up eighteen, but not do it completely. Because this is the same is Two root seven plus one times two root seven plus two. So then you're just doing the same thing. Do we have any questions in general about how to multiply radicals with distributing? One last operation we got to talk about, which is dividing. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, so when we do this, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. It really is your preference on, I see that these can be simplified, so I would want to do that, or 
we're going to talk about um, rationalizing here. But so with number nine, uh, number one, I see that these are both perfect squares. So I could separate those as the square root of 49 over the square root of 100. And then just take the square root of both, which would be what? And that would be your final answer. You could do the same thing with two, except <clears throat> both of those aren't perfect squares, so you have to simplify both. Or you could simplify 8 over 32, which would be what? 1 fourth. And then uh, separate it, which would be 1 over 2. You might get examples like 3, where I know 16 is a perfect square, so I want to separate at least that, but you have to separate both, so. And then you just take the square root of 16 and leave the square root of 3. So you leave that as a square root? Yes. You can do that if it can't be simplified. Or can be done one of two ways. If you wanted to separate it because of the square root of 49, that would work. And then you would just leave that as is. However, if you saw, instead of maybe separating it, you saw 7 goes into 49, I could simplify this fraction. This can still be simplified, I'm just going to show you how. And you're, we're going to end up with the same thing. So if you get something like this, you still need to separate it. And in math, you don't normally see radicals in the denominator. So we do something called rationalizing. And I'm going to show them what that means. So this would be 1 over the square root of 7. But we don't want to keep that square root of 7 in the denominator. So to rationalize it, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by whatever the denominator radical is. So when we do that, we get the square root of 7 over the square root of 49, which we had already. So if you chose in this case to simplify first, you would then have to rationalize. But if you had just separated, then you wouldn't have to do this. But it also depends on what radical you get. Do you have any questions so far? We're going to do one more that I choose, and you guys can choose. So, with something like 5, you can choose to put it back in one radical and simplify it. Or you can choose to do this as is. Like I know 10 can't be simplified, but 45 could. And I could do that, but then you might have to rationalize. You might have to do that either way, but it depends. So I'm going to try and put it back together and then simplify like that. What would that give me if I simplify that? And then if I separate that, I have the square root of 2 over the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 over 3. If I had done this as is and just worked with the square root of 45, we would have got 9 and 5, so 3 root 5 but then would have had a square root in the denominator and had to rationalize. So however you choose to start it, that's your choice. You just have to continue with it all the way through. Yes. Have you rationalized this coefficient? It would be the same thing. So let's say I had broke that down. Then I would just take the square root of 5 and just multiply it. You can do both, but then you get bigger numbers. So you 
you want to try to avoid that, but you could you multiply by three root five instead of just root five. It doesn't matter. So then the three would stay at the bottom. Yes, but also we knew that. Um, and it also depends on how you simplify. Because I now rationalize, I have to change both of these, I have to simplify this, it becomes a little bit of a longer process. Um, 25 and 2. And then this would just become 5 root 2 over 2. You could multiply this by 15 and um, simplify it there, or leave it, and then cross out the five. So you have choices, you just have to know what works best for you and which one you'd rather do. Questions on that? So the square root of the uh, square root of two always means the final answer? Yes. What other ones here do we want to see? Do we go over and have questions about? So with 10, do we want to simplify them as is or put it back into a bigger fraction? Back into Okay. So 4 and 3 can't be simplified, but if I could, like in 12, I would. But I'm going to write this as 4 over 3 times the square root of 15 over 27. 4 over 3, I already said, can't be simplified, but what would 15 over 27 be? And then I could separate both of those. So we have 4 root 5 over 3 root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Which would leave us with 4 root 5 over 9, and nothing there can be simplified. So if you had chose the other method, um, breaking each one down, 15 couldn't be simplified, but 27 could because of the square root of 9, and then you would have went through this whole thing. Other questions on this one? A lot of these, the main choice, most of these cannot be rationalized unless you do the other choice. But on the back, most of them should be rationalized. So look on the back. Um, the topic is explaining how to rationalize. You multiply both the numerator and denominator by the radical and the denominator. Look at any of these problems. Are there any you want to see? Do you go over have questions about? Twenty-three. Mm -hmm. I think doing those two and then we'll be done for today. So for number 18, if I were to put it back into one big fraction, that still wouldn't help me. So I would need to rationalize, multiply the square root of 3 to both the numerator and the denominator. Now again, if you wanted to do the whole thing and multiply 10 root 3, you could also do that. You don't need to do that. You can if you want. So we can simplify the square root of 12 to be what? What is the highest perfect square that goes into 12? 4 and 3. 4 and 3. 4 and 3. 4 and 3. Which would be 2 root 3 over 10 times 3. Um, and then we could simplify that to be what? 3 root 3 over 15. Questions, confusion there? And 23, same 
explain how would I rationalize this? Multiply, multiply square root of 8 to both. So we have square root of 24 over 2 times the square root of 64. How could I simplify the square root of 24? Because the highest perfect square that goes into 24. Four, four and six. So we have, I'm going to leave this like this, two root six over two times eight, or just root six over eight. Any questions on how we divide radicals? Why is that to be 80? The square root of 64 is 80. Okay. The delta math on this is not due until next Friday, but you're welcome to do it since it's fresh in your mind. You guys do have three, three delta maths that are due today. Your curve of best fit, your simplifying radicals, and your rational exponents. You can work on past delta math, work on J labs, test nav, the practice quizzes. Be working on something. Use time wisely.